All right. Greetings from the dark continent, Conscious Caracal or Aaron Svansal here. How's everybody doing? Uh, just a chill Friday night stream here to discuss some things that I've seen this week and also just to test out some more features of StreamYard. Uh, I think it's the best opportunity now we will have. Yeah. Let's see here. Chat says. <clears throat> right. Well, uh, the ANC is really enjoying their communist power party, says Garua Burmeyer. I couldn't agree more. Um, definitely a thing that we're seeing here is that I think by every day that goes by, we just see a lot of these, these policies being exposed. It's not really being about combating the virus, but rather about just exercising their power. Hello, Bernard. Doing well on you, man. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, let me just put that on the screen. Let's see if this works. So I've tried this out offline. Let me just... Uh... Okay, so I think that's working. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, uh, just this tweet by by Quinton today really uh, caught my eye. Um, so he says, uh, the fir first at first they came for the cigarettes and I did not speak up because I'm not a smoker. Then they came for the alcohol and I did not speak up because I'm not a drinker. Then later they came for the cooked chicken and I did not speak up because I'm a dumbass who can't recognize danger. Okay, so this is uh, relates to news that came out today that, well, uh, it seems like stores like Woolworths or other stores are not going to be able to sell cooked foods anymore. Prepared foods is the word they used. Now, my question would be, is bread a prepared food? All right. Uh, welcome to Stream of Consciousness, uh, another gentleman. Uh, I hope you stay here for a while. Uh, tonight's not a very serious chat. Going through some news from South Africa. <laughs> Um, but you are no guest tonight. Uh, later next week, there will be a guest, and I will let you guys know shortly uh, who that's going to be. So let's see if I can. Okay, so stop. Okay, cool. So that I've seemed to have mastered that feature of StreamYards. Then something else that I wanted to talk about that I think is. It's just ridiculous. I'll get into this now. Uh, let me just see. Uh, uh, this one. All right. So let me see. Is this going to be different? No, that's just one. All right. So here's some, some breaking news for everyone that's been theorizing about when the, the alcohol ban is going to be lifted. Uh, so just before I go on, um, if you are listening from abroad, uh, type 1 in the chat. If you are listening from South Africa, type 2. Just want to get a little bit of a feel for what audience we have here tonight. That will determine how much context I give. All right. Seems like we've got a nice mix here. So I think I'll I'll keep the context also I'll keep the context not too too detailed, but I'll give the basic stuff here that uh, most of the South Africans in the chat will probably know. So uh, basically in South Africa the sale of cigarettes and alcohol has been banned since the lockdown started 21 days ago. Well now 22 days ago. Uh, yesterday was 21 days. When the initial lockdown was supposed to end and now it's been extended by two weeks so for another two weeks cigarettes and alcohol is not going to be sold and it's not just the sale of alcohol um because then uh, a lot of people would argue as well um, it stops people from going to the shops and stops uh, social uh, contact and whatever uh, that's why the alcohol ban is good well uh, we've been seeing videos now of the army uh, dumping people's homemade uh, beer and alcohol on the ground. So it's not uh, to stop people from buying alcohol. It is actually an outright ban on alcohol itself, it seems. Um, <laughs> so that's a kind of 
blows that whole argument of trying to stop people from going to the liquor store out of the water. And like we started this whole stream that with that theme of uh, the, wait, let me just put up that uh, piece of chat again, because I think it sounds it up so beautifully. This one, ANC is really enjoying the communist power party. And I think that's what we're seeing here with videos of uh, army officers dumping alcohol on the ground that has just been brewed in someone's backyard. All right. Okay, so we've got a we've got a nice mix of foreign listeners, but also domestic listeners. So, like I said, I'll keep I'll I'll add a level of context there, taking the foreign listeners into account. Um, yeah. So there's for this. So my thought here is that I thought, and this was my prediction. When was this? Two weeks ago? A week and a half ago? My prediction was that the ANC is going to use uh, the booze ban and the cigarette ban as leverage or as a sweetener to sell the extension of the lock lockdown to South Africans. I thought they were going to say, okay, we're going to ask you to endure another X amount of weeks of lockdown, but because you've been so uh, on your best behavior and because we are thinking of you in this very hard time, we're going to make it a bit easier for you. And we're going to unban the sale of cigarettes and alcohol and uh, some other loosening of some other restrictions. Um, like a very typical used car salesman tactic where if you want to sell a car, a second hand car, and you are willing to sell it for 40k, uh, your first offer is going to be like 80k. So then when the person rejects that offer, well, not that offer, but when the person rejects that price, you cut it down to like 50k. And then the person's like, wow, 50k, that's almost half price. Yeah, man, I'll take that. Meanwhile, um, you were willing to sell the car for 40k. So it's that big opening uh, price. That, and I thought that's what the ANC is going to do with this lockdown thing. I thought they're going to go hard on at the beginning and try and get people really like uh, riled up about how draconian it is. And then as they need to extend it, they were going to chip away some of them and say, okay, but we'll give you this, give you this. Meanwhile, the scam is the things that they were going to give back to you or the, the, the loosening up of restrictions were things that shouldn't have been banned in the first place. But now it seems that's not even the, the case here. Um, let me just go back to radio screen. So that's not even the case here. It seems like the ANC is not, doesn't appear that smart. And I feel a bit foolish of, for thinking that they are that smart to, to even, uh, they seem to even be getting this basic strategy wrong uh, in terms of just getting people on your side. Um, so yeah, uh, so I see here, let's check here in the chat, some, some comments. Uh, sideline opinion says wine exports were banned, then allowed again, and then transport of alcohol is banned again. Well, I mean, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's, it's really bizarre, man. Uh, 99 Iron Duke says, I bet the Shabins are still open. Um, it seems like from the stories that I've heard uh, on in, on social media, they seem to be using spotters where someone waits outside and looks for, for the cops. And as soon as the they they see the cops coming, they kind of close everything down and they just open up again. But they seem to be uh, a lot of liquor stores, especially in informal settlements, also seem, seem to be raided. Uh, a lot of videos coming out of uh, liquor stores being uh, looted, uh, people breaking down walls to get to their booze. <laughs> It's actually, it's actually quite funny, um, but it's just a sign of the, the times we're living. Let's see. Quinton asks, can you find any rhyme or reason in the cooked meat ban? Um, I don't really think about it in terms of why, how I would reason it or how I would <laughs> try and justify it. I just thought it was ridiculous. But if I had to put myself in the ANC's mind and I had to spin this, I was like the, the minister of propaganda, I would probably say. Um, the cooked food ban is necessary because it stops that connection between the the preparation of food that is prepared by human hands, human hands that could be contaminated by this virus. When those contaminated hands come in contact 
with the food or even there's a risk of those hands coming in contact with the food uh this food will then be served to our people and that means that the virus will spread even further so we are putting this ban in place to make sure that people's lives are not at risk and we are making sure that people are safe that south africans are safe this is for everyone's best in everyone's best interest uh we south africans know how to make our own food eh, eh. There, that would be my that would be my answer as the the, the minister of propaganda Quinton says, Karen's out there act like spotters for the cops. Well, it, that's what I find so funny about this whole thing. Is that, and I've, I've been making this point for a while now, even before uh, the Rona hit. Uh, I was talking about the fact that uh, people always look at like the worst dictatorships in history. Or like they look at all these like authoritarian regimes, whether it be in the past or the present. And they say, I can't believe that people allowed it to get so bad. How can regular people just do this? And then they do exactly the same things as soon as they are put in a similar situation. Even not even under an authoritarian regime, they already start doing it. They're, they're so giddy to start doing it, to start licking those boots. It's, it's actually really interesting to see um, the psychology around it. It's, it's not that you are special that you think that if I was in that situation, I wouldn't do it. A lot of people are just have the luxury of living in a free society where they are never put in that position. But as soon as they get a little taste of living under a boot, they seem to be inclined to ask that the boot be, be pressed harder against their throats. Really bizarre behavior. All right, Wotan is in the house. Hey man, how are you doing? I mean, if there wasn't a lockdown, it would probably be around this time where I'm having a beer with you, man. You're going to have to catch up, make up for lost time. <laughs> what do you think of the EFF's support for more bands? Uh, well, I think that's just uh, the most predictable thing ever. Because you see, what the EFF has to do is at the moment they are slipping into further and further into irrelevancy um the anc is very much in the ascendancy um the eff don't have anything to latch on to during this time even things like ewc people are not talking about it people don't care about that so and that's why julius malema freaked out the other day on twitter um saying like all oh, you can all oh, you can go to hell because uh malema what must fall was trending and i think he's just realizing that in a time of crisis, he, he, him and his, his party are unable to capitalize on it and they are failing horribly. So now, uh, why are they supporting further bans? I think it's just a desperate attempt to try and distinguish themselves from the ANC. Because that's the, the only brand that the EFF really has is that the ANC is ineffective. We want to do what the ANC set out to do, but we will, we will actually achieve it through more radical policies and not uh, all this talk with more action, that very popular uh, left-wing populist message. And now what we're seeing is that they, they just can't compete, man. The, the ANC is already radical enough. The ANC is already uh, shifting more and more to authoritarianism now in within this uh, crisis scenario, which means that for the EFF to keep to their business model or to their, um, not their, to their, their strategy uh, would mean that they have to go further as, as, as the further the ANC moves to the left or the further the ANC moves towards authoritarianism, the only thing the EFF can do is to move further in that direction to try and outdo them. And that's what we're seeing here. Um, and I think something that decimated the EFF is their very vocal support of open borders up until this point. I think if you support open, if you are a politician and you, you care about capturing the the, the national vote and really getting riling people up getting a large support of the populace in terms of the average working class blue collar guys in south africa i think the worst the worst anchor policy you can tie yourself to right now is open borders even before covid hit the world open borders was a terrible cause to tie yourself to in south africa it's not a very popular 
policy. It's not very ideologically uh, cohesive with the, the most of the population. The vast majority of South Africans hate the idea of open borders. Um, so, and I'm, I'm talking about like uncontrolled immigration, which what the EFF wants. I'm not talking about like open borders in terms of allowing immigration. I'm talking about like taking an erase, eraser on the map and erasing the borders because um, they're colonial constructs. <laughs> and I think that's just, yes, it's, 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 a, it's a policy anchor in this time where if you tie yourself to it, you're gonna sink to the bottom. It's, I don't know who's advising the EFF, but it's definitely not South Africans. They're being advised by, they have some foreign advisors, man, because their they ideology is not conducive to the South African populace. They are so out of touch with the regular South African when it comes to that. I always thought the EFF had a very, very firm uh, connection to like the, the working class average South Africa. I thought they had a, they knew how to get like the, the disenfranchised, alienated, marginalized South African to really back their cause like the unemployed south african the guy that's lost everything i thought they could do that but then they just say things like this like back like open borders and i'm like wait a minute you guys aren't actually <laughs> that clued up as i thought um so my advice to the eff would be to hire local man hire some south african advisors you'll do much better Ninety nine Iron Duke says Western governments are using the China virus as an excuse for authoritarianism. Although they have not been dumb enough to try and ban cigarettes and booze. I know, man. It's yeah, it's so bizarre. It's really it's just it's at if you're going to try and oppress me, if you're going to try and be an authoritative government, at least like do it in style. Don't be like don't be a fool. Like <laughs> It's the same propaganda, dude. I I have an appreciation for good propaganda. Um, yeah, it is an art form. But then when I just see bad propaganda, I'm like, yeah, dude, come on. Uh, at least try. Uh, at least let there be an attempt. And the same goes for this. Like, if you're going to try and take away my rights and freedoms, at least try. Like, at least make it entertaining and, like, put some skill into it till I actually, uh, like, make it more entertaining. But this is just some weak weak attempt mm. oh here's on a lighter note much more uh actually a type of theme that i like um quinton says i'm not a boer i left south africa but i can tell you that once in SA, your heart and your soul will always have a deep connection to it and its people that's definitely true um, i can testify to that as well <laughs> that's right i think the the eff has some globalist um advisors man i don't think they've got local advisors because they the ideas just don't it, it seems like every year that goes by they just be, become more and more out of touch uh there's something else i wanted to talk about oh yeah this let's put this on the screen uh so still figuring out this uh screen sharing with screen parts let's see no, this one this is tragic this is absolutely tragic so uh shopkeeper killed for refusing to sell cigarettes um this was reported yesterday um, and my message to the to the status boot, bootlickers is just, uh, well, guys, uh, here's how the cigarette ban is going. I hope you're happy. Um, the, this guy's blood is on the hands of whoever came up with that stupid policy idea. So this happened in Marmesbury, which is my hometown where I grew up. Um, so, yeah, it's actually pretty surreal. Uh, yeah. Suspect fatally stabbed a shopkeeper to death for refusing to sell cigarettes at a superette in the Western Cape during the nationwide lockdown because he wasn't allowed because cigarettes are bad. Um, just uh, my final thought will be just like slow clap, slow clap for the for the status bootlickers that supported this type of policy, dude. Uh, well done. Uh, I hope you're happy.
Okay. Let me just catch up here. Well, there seems to be an entire <laughs> conversation going on in the in the chat as well. Very nice. Yeah, this is a very strong message. Nachbreker um, says that includes the Rhodesians. Once blood flows in the soil, you can leave Africa, but it doesn't leave you. No, for sure, man. It's a special thing. I've always said there's a type of brain parasite in Africa that infects people that move here uh, from other countries. Uh, for example, when the English uh, moved here, they became they got infected and became the Rhodesians. Uh, when the Portuguese moved here, they got infected and became the Mozambicans, uh, the Mozambican Poras. <laughs> and uh, when the Western Europeans came here, they became the Afrikaners. You become something else here, man. You get possessed by a different type of soul, like a, a different continent becomes your home. Okay. Well, there was something else that's also very, very concerning. Well, not concerning, but it's it's actually more funny than concerning. Let me just put that up here. this so prepared food is not allowed to be sold during the lockdown period supermarkets are also not allowed to sell cooked food if you know of one please report them to the south african police service we are revoking fraudulent applications and referring them to the dti for legal action scary stuff dudes uh but on a more positive note the the replies are just the replies are just absolute gold yeah. yeah so i think south africans are still putting up a nice a nice comedic resistance to the to this whole thing all right. <laughs> I hear you, man. Uh, I can completely understand. You get, like I said, there's a type of bug here that bites you. And whatever type of disease it infects you with, or brain worm or whatever, it doesn't leave your body ever. Evening trolley, how are you doing, man? If you guys have any questions or topics that you want to discuss you are happy I'm, i'll be happy to see them in the chats always like i said just wanted to talk about some things that i saw this week or actually mostly saw today and then also just testing out uh, stream yards testing out the uh screen screen presentation but it seems to be working perfectly Right, yeah, look at Julius has made selling illegal cigarettes. Now he pushes the ban. Billions. So what I find funny there is when, when Julius uh, tweeted out, like, he's an angry tweet about everyone can go to hell. I was like, well, <laughs> probably his cigarettes ran out during the ban. And uh, when he sent uh, a message to his buddy, uh, he was left with two tick, blue tick marks. That's why he made the tweet. But it's the most stupid thing ever it's like but like i said let's give it a little more time i saw something change in the public discourse or in the zeitgeist yesterday when the first 21 days were done the 21 days that people mentally prepared themselves that the lockdown would last and now that the lockdown has been extended you can see the dawning on people i think the novelty is very fast or very quickly running out and fading and people are just going to start saying well I'm not be part of this I don't want to uh, live under this lockdown anymore so let's see people still have some people still have cigarettes some people still have their booze stocks but let's see what happens when those start running out 
Interesting question from Iron Duke. Uh, are Afri forums still getting on okay with Encarta and the Zulu people? Um, yes, well, I'm, I work for Afri Forum, but I don't specifically work in that department that uh, deals with the intercultural exchanges we do and the, the support we give there. Um, but we've been actually ramping up our, our intercultural projects where we're trying to build good relations between like-minded people in South Africa and build good connections between cultures that share a lot of our values. Um, for example, uh, with the with the Zulu king that invited us uh, to his birthday, I think last year, and uh, that's what it's about, man. Uh, you're going to you're going to need friends, and there are a lot of potential friends in South Africa, people that that share your values and that will that will help you. I mean, the the Africana. If you, you have to look at the Africana's history, we've never just been on our own. We've had a lot of uh, allies in South Africa over the hundreds of years that we've been here. Uh, specifically, the the Trinas, um With when was it in at Fakhkop, I think, where uh, uh, what was that chief called? Uh, chief Maroka of a, a, a branch of the Twana tribe sent us uh, oxen to we after a battle when we had to move uh, our ox wagons uh, we didn't have enough oxen so this chief sent us oxen to to help us there you know he was one of the great allies of the boers so if you look at through the the boer history there's a lot of intercultural connection it's not just a story of conquest or a story of enemies it's actually much more complicated and nuanced than people realize but you need to know your history to know that uh, which is sad because uh, not everyone has the time or the will to really go go read what what's been written down and what's been recorded. Uh, you'll realize that it's not just a story of uh, Boer isolationism or Larkrik. It's actually a lot of uh, intercultural connection that goes back hundreds of years. Oh man, Tolly, I ran out of cigarettes yesterday. F's in the chat, boys. If I had a hat, I would take it off out of respect in mourning. Not up north. <clears throat> Not up north here in, uh, in Gauteng, Jack. Uh, here it's pretty damn hard. It's like a rare as hen's teeth. We actually have a, a Trana in the chat. <laughs> Speak of the devil. <clears throat> well, uh, Bernard, uh, like I've been saying, I thought with the first extension already that they were going to uh, loosen up some of the restrictions uh, to kind of sweeten the deal and sell it on to South Africans, but they didn't. Which tells me now that now the ANC has put themselves in, in an even worse position because now they are going to be forced to put in very serious loosening of restrictions if they want to extend it again. They are not, without loosening the restrictions drastically, they are not going to be able to sell a further lockdown extension to the South African population. No way. No way that they're going to be able to sell it past 30 April. I can't see it happening. Um, it's i think they're going to extend it but they're going to extend it with some serious loosening of the of the regulations probably my prediction is going to be and i might be wrong my prediction is going to come true on the 30th of april where i thought that they're going to unban booze and cigarettes uh to push through the two-week extension they're probably going to use it as a sweetener for a further extension if they don't they are absolute morons then they are like room temperature intelligence man <laughs> Quentin says a rasta once told me some cool shit about the Chwana language and I'm dying to ask you about it well uh, Odin is the guy to go to I'm also uh, teaching myself a little bit of Chwana not going as fast as I want because I still need to get some sources in terms of like a dictionary and some sources that can help me, but I'm slowly getting there. Let's just check. There's one thing that Streamyard cannot do, 
and that show me the amount of likes that the stream has. So we are currently at 19 likes, not bad. <laughs> just for a casual chat. Like this is just a nice casual chat with a, a little bit of a opportunity for me to to test the the platform as well. I see there's a lot of other things like this. Hmm. Oh, nice. So I can put batters on as well. That's very cool. I'll do that in the future. Brand. Oh. That's awesome. Nice. So I can actually put some branding on the screen as well. Very cool. But yeah, those things are figure out later <laughs> now everyone's counting the likes in the chat <laughs> um Alpert asks is the mini zuma behind this ban on cigarettes i don't know what would she have to gain from it unless there's a lot of uh, anc carders connected to the illegal cigarettes uh, sale or the illegal cigarettes industry that would make a lot of sense because the black market for alcohol and cigarettes is absolutely booming right now not it not gonna lie if you could buy stocks in the black market i'd buy now dudes All right <clears throat> Another gentleman says that's very interesting. I would like to check out some of the some more content as I would like to wise up on the current and historical events unfolding. Well, um, from my personal perspective, South African history is an absolute adventure to read. Um, it's brutal. It's not very romantic. It's actually very sad at times and tragic. And it's gonna it's gonna tug at your heartstrings, make you frustrated, make you angry. But it's it's worth a read um where is that uh it's not here oh here it is yeah uh this is a pretty pretty good read on the, the history of south africa from 16 the 1600s to very interesting um and it'll help you and like you said it'll help you understand the the current events as they unfold and things aren't as black and white uh, as a lot of people seem to frame them uh excuse the pun <laughs> hmm. another interesting questions another interesting question it's going to the i'm if the right move um well, it's better than going to break the BRICS bank because uh, that would just make us China's bitch. But <laughs> we already are that. Um, the interesting thing about going to the IMF is that it will force the ANC to pretty much it puts the the country financially and monetarily uh, well, uh, find the, the the country's financial policies under the control of a foreign body. So they're going to the the IMF is going to take one look at. Uh, expropriation without compensation and the uh, national health insurance and they're just going to shake their head and say no that you can't have those toys um you're gonna have to spend your money on more prudent and more uh, responsible things and the uh, nhi and ewc are pretty much just alcoholic drinks for a for an ideologic uh, person drunk on ideology or a party drunk on ideology rather so going to the imf would be interesting um it would give south africa a chance in terms of giving us some meaningful ref free market reforms and you can bet your bet your entire bank account and it's not worth that much at the moment of the exchange rate but that's uh what would happen is that it would definitely put ewc and the nhi on ice but then there's also another element to it 
I don't think we're going to get uh, that IMF support that easily because we're going to stand in line of 20 or 25 other countries also in desperate need of an IMF bailout. So it's not going to be that simple. This is a very good summary of South African history. Uh, Duke says South African history is like an adventure story full of courage and tragedy. Uh, of course, um, I've got a lot of South African history books. I haven't read them all. Um, here's another one that I want to read. I haven't started yet. Wait, let me just take this off the screen. So the memoirs of Africa's most controversial leader, Ian Smith, Rhodesia. Definitely start reading that sometime. Let's see. Woten says the spirit of Botswana is tied to our three great modern chiefs. Yes, uh, Botswana's history is also fascinating. I've been reading up on it the past week. Uh, uh gentle says i've taken a screenshot thank you very much yes uh if you want any other um recommendations on books you can just ask and like what type of topic and i'll i'll, I'll check what i have <laughs> so you can go check it out but that's those two that I, well I, I can't really recommend the great betrayal yet because i haven't read it um but i can recommend the mind of south africa by alistair sparks definitely um good read even though I think he misunderstands the Boers. Um, very good. He's an English South African that wrote this. Um, very good account as a whole. Uh, but his understanding of the Boer collective psyche and what motivates the Boers uh, is lacking. Now, I think that would be my big critique on this book, would be that he doesn't, because he's not an Afrikaner, he doesn't, well, I've met a lot of non-Afrikaners that actually grasp the Afrikaner kind of psyche and mind much better than Alistair but um, I think that's one of the, the places where it's lacking but it gives you some very solid history but when it comes to him when he's because he, he indulges in this book and speculating like almost like what motivated some of these tribes and what motivated some of these groups and that's where he falls short but you'll still get some proper history on the Afrikaners in this book um just in terms of like brass tacks in terms of what happened and what what was done but you might get some some more weaker analysis in terms of why it was done if that makes sense okay what is the British Labour Party shat all over Rhodesia, but they shat all over the UK too. Parts of my French. <laughs> I don't. I'm not that familiar with UK politics. I'll keep like a little eye on them. I'll peek over at the the aisle now and then. I'm not really uh, that fascinated by it. <laughs> all right. Maybe let's see if I have some other books that I can recommend. What I'm currently reading. It's this one. Shaka Zulu. His story. Yeah. Who killed a leopard at 19? Who defied the magic of tribal witch doctors? Who imprisoned an enemy queen in a hut alone with a ravening hyena? Who, from a nucleus of 500 untrained warriors, built up an invincible army? Whose wife prophesied he would rule the world? <laughs> yeah it's I, I just love the south african story man. another one i want to read is this one. um path of blood also south african history uh michael cumulus asks I guess the Boers are not even part of the Anglosphere. Um, no, the Boers are mostly made up of Dutch, German, and French. That's 
their, their main genetic pool. There is a, a very large British influence genetically, but uh, majority is are the three the three Western European nations are the French, the Dutch, and the Germans. What subculture of the Anglo Sea is more similar to that of the Boer? Mm, I don't know. I'm not that familiar with the with the Anglosphere, man. I'd probably say the Rhodesians. The Rhodesians were the closest to the Boers because they were also a, a white African tribe and they also saw themselves as such. They saw themselves as part of Africa and tied to the continent. Michael says, I see elements of the American cowboy being akin to South African, but maybe Aussies more so. Uh, I wouldn't say any of those two, really, man. Uh, Africa is a different beast to Australia and to America. Um, Africa is, is, a, is a strange place, man. That's why I always find it so funny when Australians are like, wow, look at how tough we are. We've got big spiders. Dude. I'm like, We've got scary people. I'll take your spiders over some of the people here. Man. Some of the criminals. Bradley Cook says, I would be interested to see the book that is written in 100 years about the ZA period from 1980 to 2030. 50 year insight. That would be fascinating. But it would depend how good that book will be will depend on who writes it and uh, how well researched and object uh, how not, i mean they can't be objective they can try but how hard they try to be objective uh, and trying to understand what happened rather than just telling one person or one group's story where they are the heroes and everyone there's a quote i can't remember who said it that said every people every people are the heroes in their own story and think that the whole world and the story of the world is their struggle against it. Something like that. Michael asks, have you read the heart of darkness? No, I have not. I don't know if I have it here. This is not all the books I have. This is just what I can fit in my little apartment. <laughs> the rest are in a box. But I have Heart of Darkness, just haven't read it. Visible, maybe I should put that on the screen. Uh, let me just find it. Um, uh, what should I search? Back in the uh, it'll probably be here. There's an excellent piece that pretty much describes exactly what you're talking about. Uh, uh, I find it now. Here we go. Hmm. Okay, I'll just find it on Google. No, that's not the The, the piece written on the on the Boers by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the, the rights of Sherlock Holmes. This one. No, it's not the full quote. Here it is. I'll just to get it directly from the source. Just put this on a. Never mind, I'll just read it. Take a community of Dutchmen, of the type of those who defended themselves for 50 years against all the power of Spain at the time when Spain was the greatest power in the world. 
intermix them with a strain of those inflexible French Huguenots who gave up home and fortune and left their country forever at the time of the revocation of the Edict of Nantes. The product must obviously be one of the most rugged, virile, unconquerable, ferocious beasts eh, races ever seen upon earth. Take this formidable people and train them for seven generations in constant warfare, our ninth generation, and against savage men and beasts in circumstances under which no weakling could survive. Place them so that they acquire exceptional skill with weapons and in horsemanship. Give them a country which is imminent, <laughs> sorry, English is not my first language, is imminently suited to the tactics of the huntsman, the marksman, and the rider. Then finally, put a finer temper upon their military qualities by a, da by a dour, fatalistic Old Testament religion and an ardent and consuming patriotism. Combine all these qualities and all these impulses in one individual and you have the modern Boer, the most formidable antagonist who has ever crossed the path of the Imperial Britain. Our military history is largely consistent in our conflicts with France, but Napoleon and all his veterans have never treated us so roughly as those hard-bitten farmers with their ancient theology and their inconveniently modern rifles. Look at the map of South Africa and there in the middle, in the center of the British possessions, like the stone in a peach, lies the great stretch of the two republics, a mighty domain for so small a people. How many, how came they there? How are these Teutonic folk who have borrowed so deeply, you know, who are these Teutonic folk who have borrowed so deeply into Africa? It is a twice told tale, yet it must be told once again if the story is to have even the most superficial of introductions. For no one can know or appreciate the Boer who does not know his past, for he is what his past has made him. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, that's written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the head of the, or oh, the, the writer of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, if you keep the stream up, I'll listen later. Yeah, it, it'll stay up, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not uh, going to delete it afterwards. Um, <laughs> Quentin says, Boers are badass as fuck. That's why the poor as love it. So... That quote from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is from chapter one uh, from his book, The Great Boer War. Uh, so for the, I can't remember who it was, the person that asked for books is a book you can read. It's probably not going to mention the, probably not going to mention the, the concentration camps in the war if it's written from a British perspective and or they might be a bit romanticized. But yeah, uh, I think that would be a good place to start as well. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think I've gotten the hang of stream yards now i'll be able to do some some nice streams in the future randy lens asks what is the boer reproduction rate uh, there was a study that was published not too a while too long ago that actually showed the let me just find it uh the booming of the the boer or the african speaking population in south africa let me just find it um If I can find it. Search. Um, no, I can't find it now. 
but it was a study done by the Solidarity Movement's research department that found that uh, the population is actually growing, not shrinking. So the the birth rate would be then it, it has to be more than two then um, a birth rate of like two point one or two point two, I would guess. Um, right. This is also a very good point. <coughs> Never forget the big role that strong women played in the history of the Boers. No, of course not. Um, there's this very famous picture. I'm just going to see if I can find it. Uh, of the Boer woman standing up to the English soldier. Um, it's hard to find. I, I was looking for it the other day and I couldn't find it. It's a very famous painting. I don't know why it's so hard to find. Wait, I know what I'll do. Um, uh, oh, of course it's not here. I saved it on, on, a, on a folder. Um, so what I'll do is, let me just do this. I can't find it now, but I'll put it on Twitter. I'll look for it later today or later tonight. I'll put it on, on my Twitter. Well, Randy Lenz says, uh, makes a comment about women having to remind anyone that they did anything. South African history or the Boers history will have to disagree with you, man. Uh, so the, the Boer women in our history played a defining role. There was a point in the Boer War where the men, the majority, well, the uh, large portion of the men were ready to give up. And it was the women that, that drove them forward and said, we, we can't give up now. So I don't think your, your remark uh, makes sense in the Boer context. Uh, women walked barefoot over the Drakensberg Mountains. Uh, if, if it weren't for the women of the Boer folk, uh, we wouldn't be here today. I'm going to go for uh, eight minutes still. Uh, I think at eight o'clock, done with the stream. Right, yeah. Uh, Boer women clearly depicted at the. <coughs> I hope that's not the Rona. Boer women clearly depicted at the Fort Trekker monument. Uh, yes, they are. Uh, for good reason. Oh, no. The Boer women are some of the toughest you'll find in the world. You'll, you'll struggle to find tougher. Uh, The reason we built a monument to them. yeah let me check here okay just find a good picture uh, yeah here we go okay i'll just put this on on the screen and maybe i'll just put this as well so this is at the foot of the foot trick of I can't find a good picture of it. Here we go. This is good enough. Uh, let's put it just full screen. Perfect. Okay. So this is at the foot of the foot trick this picture um, this one. so this picture of oh, this uh, woman with her two children and the Fort Checker monument is like the monument built to the Afrikaners survival in Africa and we put 
the, the image of the woman and her two children at the foot of it, as in like keeping it all up. So that just shows the reverence that Afrikaners and Boers have for the women in, in our past and our history and in our modern society as well. And this is written at the bottom. Uh, let's just find that. This. This. So it says, Women and Children, Anton van Vaux. Anton van Vaux was one of, uh, this is just about the sculpture. The Voortrekker woman occupies an honorary position at the foot of the Voortrekker monument. Without her contribution, perseverance, and sacrifices, the great trek of 1835 to 1854 would not have resulted in a permanent settlement in the interior. This sculpture was completed in 1938 and was Van Vaux's last commission. It was the first public sculpture case as one. Uh, it's just small details. But yeah, there you go. There we go. I think Dachbrekers found it. Uh, burning farm of treacherous burger. There we go. We have a winner. Just put it on the screen. Just find a good copy of it. There we go. Perfect. But that's why I'll find another copy of it. <laughs> Here's a phone cover of the image. Okay, it's got a watermark on it. Uh, I don't care. I just want to show the image. There we go. Uh, she's good. There we go. So that's the, the iconic image that I was talking about. So the context here is the British are burning down her farm and uh, she's just telling them to get bent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of my ancestors was thrown in jail, uh, one of my female ancestors for not wanting to give her horses to the British during the brew. All right, yeah, I'm also done in two minutes. Uh, thank you, T-Dog. <laughs> uh, I'm off. Uh, keep well, everyone. Thanks for the stream, CC. Uh, keep well, man. Uh, alles funny beste. So we're going to wrap it up in a, in a minute or so. <clears throat> Tonight's been nice and nice and chilled. And yeah, I'm pretty comfortable now with the, the screen sharing mechanism here on Streamlabs as well. Even though I'm Gen Z, uh, growing up in a small town means something like that. Uh, brushed up on tech. Right, I don't have a inclination to you always want to like figure out tech or a master on it. <laughs> All right. Hey, Dan. I will definitely fit gaan out. I will see you where it will go. I will see you where it Thank you for the first All right. It is 8 o'clock here in South Africa, Central Africa time. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. It was a really nice uh, chilled stream. Uh, it actually helps a little bit with the lockdown, so it's something to do uh, in my off time. <laughs> but yeah, this was nice uh, sharing some South African history and uh, some perspectives with you guys. Um, if you're not subscribed yet and you're new to the channel, 
uh, I appreciate it if you hang or a stick about. So there's going to be some a lot of streams in the future. I'm going to have some guests on next week, and I'll be covering some South African news as well. Uh, as je Afrikaans is en jy het uh, vanavond geluister, ek het Afrikaanse kanaal ook uh, met die naam In Alle Ernds, waar ek uh, Afrikaanse onderhoude doen en ook Afrikaanse, uh, Afrikaanse potsien in episodes doen. So jy kan dit net gaan kyk. Um, ek dink dat nie, nou, daar is nie skakel in die beskrywing daarvoor nie, maar as jy intik in alle ernst, soos my naam, E-R-N-S-T, dan kan jy daar gaan gerust kyk. Ek dink daar is een veel lekker goed is om te check daar. Alright, thank you very much for everyone tuning in. Uh, I hope you have a pleasant night. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and uh, stay conscious. <laughs> All right, just checking the last few messages that are coming in. I'll put them on. All right, I think that'll be it. Hope you guys have a pleasant evening. Uh, cheers, guys. Have a good one.